Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. This is part three of the Car Wreck tutorial. In part one, I showed you how I completed the underpainting for this artwork, and then in part two, I focused on showing you how I did some of the rust techniques to get it up to this stage. So now I'm going to add a background to this particular artwork, and then I'm going to call it done. So let's get into it right now. As you can see, I'm using my Iwata HPCS Eclipse. This runs a 0.35mm needle nozzle setup, and I've got peach flesh in the airbrush uh, mixed to my particular liking. I tend to mix it way thinner than just a one-to-one -one ratio. So generally I'd use, maybe in the Eclipse I'll go a bit thicker, so it might be sort of 40% paint with 60% reducer. Uh, depending on what I'm trying to achieve, but I do like my paint to flow really nicely and to avoid a lot of the tip drying. To reduce the paint, I am using the Trident Reducer. Um, that is definitely the best stuff to use, and then that also allows the paint to be able to be stored afterwards if you have mixed up any specialty colours. So if this is the first time to the channel, then welcome. Feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, and that'll notify you every time I put out new content. And for everyone else that's been watching for a while, welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying this video so far and that you've also enjoyed watching parts one and two of this particular artwork tutorial. And if you do think that this could help someone else, by all means, feel free to share it out and that will help to build this particular community. Okay, so now that I've finished with the first part of the background, I'm using a, a vinyl. This is actually a Metamark vinyl. Um, I have spoken about this in the past that I don't usually use this one. I just had a heap of it, so I'm f almost finished with it. It does work really well. The only drawback from this particular product is that if you leave it on for too long, it will leave glue. So pretty much be sure to remove this vinyl once you've completed the artwork and do not leave it on overnight. Otherwise you will, yeah, you will get some glue residue, which can be a nightmare to remove. Um, before I put this vinyl on as well, I have sealed the artwork, which I do quite regularly with when I use any water-based product, doesn't matter what it is, I usually seal it with a intercoat clear. In this particular um, artwork, I use the SG100 intercoat clear by House of Color. So you'll notice that I'm masking this uh, car up as a positive and I'm cutting out any areas that I want to be in the background and I'm doing that using my X-Acto knife and just trying not to go too deep. You do not want to score the paint underneath so I'm just letting the, the weight of the uh, blade with a nice sharp blade glide along that vinyl. I'd rather have to do two cuts but I mean, I've done this for many, many years, so I do have really good control over the blade. But um, if you are just starting out, I do recommend maybe doing this first on a separate panel, getting the feel for it. Even if you just spray a basic color, mask over the top and practice cutting, and you'll notice that if you can just cut through the vinyl and not affect the paint underneath, then you're good to go. So you'll see here I've switched my airbrush and I'm using an HPA. Uh, not sure if these are still available. Um, I know that Iwata were dis discontinuing these and I picked up a couple before that happened. I do quite enjoy using them as they just have that little cutout for a few drops of paint in that paint reservoir. So um, it's, it's really kind of cool because you've got nothing obstructing your line of sight, similar to a side feed but you also have the added bonus of not having a cup on the side, so that's kind of cool. 
So now that I've laid down all my peach flesh, I'm moving on to moss green. This time I'm using Createx illustration colors just because of the color that I, I wanted to use. And I'm lifting up some of that mask um, just so that I can allow some of the freehanding to happen and sort of tie the artwork in with the, uh, the background that I am doing. So I'm just using that moss green in an uneven fashion to colour my uh, bushes here in this outback setting. And I've now switched to a light blue, so this is just uh, white mixed with blue and obviously a reducer again. And you'll notice I am spraying in those window sections um, just to remove some of the initial overspray when I did the underpainting. And I'm going to work up from there and then fade it back out, back into that red section. This is going to be my base colour for the clouds. And if you do want to watch a complete cloud tutorial, I'll pop a link in a card just above here, and you can go check that out as well. I use very similar methods in both, but the uh, tutorial is a little bit more detailed than this particular one. These clouds are designed to be a bit more of a subtle sort of effect. Now that I've finished with that blue, I am coming in with some white and I'm just starting to shape those clouds. I'm also using a, um, a bit of uh, paper towel that I've just torn unevenly and I'm holding that up as my loose uh, template just to start to really create those cloud shapes and then I'm freehanding from that. So working in a bit sharper in certain areas where that highlight is really prominent and then uh, further away from the surface and just uh, basically dusting it on for the, the clouds that are further away. So after completing that first layer, I am coming back in with white and I'm further detailing those clouds. Again, jumping between my paper template and just freehand airbrushing and this time I'm using the Iwata CMSB Micron. This runs a 0.18mm needle. So this is the airbrush that I tend to use all of my highlights. I run the paint extremely thin uh, and uh, this, because it's the finest setup, allows me to get all those fine details that I want when doing those uh, final highlights, which is obviously right towards the end of an artwork. So you want to make sure that you're super accurate. So get yourself a reference image as well when you're doing these sort of clouds. Um, I did have one which, which is just there to pick up on certain shapes and uh, you know highlights from cloud scenes, but I'm not just replicating that, I'm just making it up as I go. Clouds are a lot of fun, you can sort of just play around with them and add bits here and there. But um, just gradually build them up because like everything, you can also go too much and uh, a lot of the time, less is more. And while I've got that white, I'm just going to start to add some highlights into the bushes as well as the uh, sort of areas in the back of that um, horizon line 
so those parts I'm not airbrushing as sharp obviously anything in the foreground is a lot more detailed so that will create that sense of depth and then we've got the uh, car wreck which is masked up and protected so when I remove the mask it's going to give you that real contrast and that sense of realism I'm now using a sepia brown to further detail a lot of this uh, background and the shrubs as well as the ground and again just picking up slight little edges on that horizon line I'm not fully detailing and I'm not even running that color right along that horizon line I'm only um, sort of picking up certain bits and leaving gaps uh, specifically to give the illusion that that is a fair fair distance away And because I want this to be an Australiana themed artwork, I need that ground to be that sort of orangey red dust. So, as they call it, the red centre. So I'm coming in with a uh, transparent orange to really give that outback look. And now that I'm happy with the ground and the toning of it so far, I am now coming back in with my white and I'm going to start to really pick out some of those highlights in a bit more detail. I'm also adding some random highlights here and there for the ground cover, just to uh, add a little bit of extra detailing. So I'm now going to further render some of the detailing and uh, fix some of these shadows with transparent black. So this is just transparent base mixed with reducer and then I add drops of black to that. So really taking my time here to add those final details, uh, making sure that I'm nice and accurate where need be. The good thing about this sort of a design is that, you know, it's quite simple to do because if you do make a slight little mistake here or there, well that could be a crack or an extra rock in the ground. So it's quite easy to fix up mistakes. And even though it is fairly easy to do this particular background, it, it was definitely a lot of fun. You'll notice that I've used a bit of that transparent black over into that red section so that it just um, tapers in and all merges. So I prefer that rather than having just a harsh edge. That's why I didn't mask up the actual area where I was spraying that background. I wanted it just to appear as though it's all part of that. Um, you know, that you're sort of looking at the red color of the trike and then um, it sort of blends into that mural effortlessly. Okay, so now that that uh, whole background area is complete, I'm going to go ahead and carefully remove the positive mask, so that vinyl that we applied earlier, take that off, pulling at a 180 degree angle back onto itself, just so that there's the least possible chance of any lift off. 
but generally I'm pretty safe with uh, the intercoat clear and that's going to now reveal the completed artwork and here I have another shot of the whole artwork including the clouds and here are a couple of uh, pictures of the completed artwork just a close-up of the car you can see all the rust and the detailing and showcasing the clouds and the mural in its entirety again if you haven't already be sure to check out parts one and two and I do hope that you thoroughly enjoyed this video tutorial. Until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.